Hey everyone, and welcome to week two of our Write the Word, Cultivate Worship online Bible study. I know I have had a ball going through this all last week, and so now we get to enter into a new week and do the same thing over again, but it's going to be just as fun and just as meaningful. My name is Kendra, and I'm on the online Bible studies team here at Proverbs 31, and this is my friend who you guys met last week, Laura Casey, <laughs> and her and her team came up with the Write the Word journal, and so we are just so honored to go through it, Laura, and I loved what you said last week all about why you started this and why it means so much to you. And everyone, we're going to get to know Laura a little bit better this week. And so, Laura, I have some rapid fire questions. Do you hey, care to play a rapid fire game? Is that okay? Perfect. I'm here for it. All right. I'm going to say two things and you're going to pick one of the options. Okay. okay. All right. So first one, beach or mountains? Mountains. Okay. Color or neutrals? Color. <laughs> On screen, everyone, she had this beautiful red top, and, she, and I had a feeling she's gonna say earrings or bracelet. Hmm, this is a toss up, but I'm gonna say earrings. Earrings, okay, yeah. love that. Fruits or vegetables? Vegetables. Okay, is that what you grow in your garden? Oh, yes. See, you know me. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you more of a dog person or a cat person? I know that this is a very like hot topic question, but I'm going to have to say cats. We don't have either in my house, but okay. I yeah. love that. Sunshine or rain? I need both in my garden, but I'm going to go with sunshine. That's so true. And then last but not least, sweet or savory? Savory. Favorite. A favorite snack, a favorite Bible study snack that you like? To oh, have? any type of salty things, nuts, chips, guacamole, salsa. My list is long. <laughs> oh, I love that you have a little dip spread. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm more just pull it straight out of the refrigerator. Yes. Oh, yeah. The whole thing. Let's just do it up. That's great. I love it. <laughs> right, that was really fun, Laura. Thank you for playing that little fun game. And so now we're going to go into the teaching portion of this of this video. So last week we heard from you all about why is worship important and the importance of it. And so this week I would love if you could touch on how do we worship? Because for me, sometimes I, I like to make sure I get things right and I like to do things correctly. And so how can we worship and how do we know if we're doing it right? First of all, I love this question because I think when we start to ask ourselves this question, it means that we're knocking on God's door. We're trying to find answers and you will always find an answer when you knock on that door. Um, there are millions of ways to worship. So let's just call that one out first is that most of us think that worship is just something we do on Sunday morning, that the term of singing in church is interchangeable with worship time, right? Or a church service time. But when we look at scripture, and I, I just looked at a few different um, examples, uh, we see so many different ways to worship and some interesting things about those. Um, I used to think that worship was just about praising God for the things he's given you or the circumstances that you're in. But when we look at scripture, we see that actually those things are good. That's part of it. We want to thank God for, you know, the roof over our heads or our family or whatever it may be. But those things are actually just a pathway to praise. They're a pathway to unlock an even better door, which is God himself. True worship is really all about him. So, okay, a couple examples here. Okay, I'm We ready. see that, and this is my favorite example because it's the most extreme and it just amazes me every single time I read it. Job, he finds out that he loses literally everything in his life. It's wild. Every it's day. wild. It's absolutely wild. And every time I read the words Job worshiped right after he finds that out, I am amazed. I'm truly amazed. Um, but here's what happens with Job's story is eventually through a lot of complaining, which I've done a lot of that too. Job does come to a point where he says, I'm not just thanking him for the things that I have because they were all taken away from me. I am praising the Lord for who he is. We see the same thing with the woman who brought the alabaster box of oil to Jesus. And she also says in that gift, she's essentially saying, God, you are king. You are king. She doesn't say, hey, Jesus, thanks for providing me for this nice oil. I'm going to put it all over you right now. No, she's, she's in that act of worship, in that gift. She's saying, God, you are king. You are my king. My, it's an intimate act of worship. And then the other one that comes to mind, there's so many, but is Abraham who is willingly about to offer his son to sacrifice again, no, 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 no. right? <laughs> Thanks Bible. <laughs> um, 
But again, he is in essence in bringing his son up that mountain and preparing him for this unimaginable thing. He's saying, God, you are God. So there are so many ways to worship. I can worship as I'm taking out the trash. I can worship as I'm doing laundry. I can worship as I'm in the garden. And here's how we, we just follow the same example of those that have come before us. We can do those things and proclaim at the same time, God, you are. And you can fill in the blank on that. And I, I'd ask everyone to do that right where you are right now. Maybe you're, you know, hanging out in your living room or, you know, watching us while you're folding laundry or whatever it may be. Let's just take the laundry to close out these examples. The laundry, I can actually worship as I'm doing the laundry and folding all the little boy undies. <laughs> because piles oh yeah all the piles all the piles I can I can worship and here's how it's not that I need to sing while I do it it's not that I need to just you know have a dance party right there but I can say in my heart God you are God you are my king and the reason why this is so important in a year like this is we can come to these mundane things that end up becoming meaningful when we just have a mind set on God as our king God being in control yeah. and Whatever we do, we can say to ourselves, God, this is really hard. This thing you've brought me to is really hard and you are God. And to me, that's how we snap ourselves out of a, a year like this and the mindset that it's been so crushing for so many of us is we come up to these things like taking out the trash and we're thinking about all the hard things that have happened in the world or whatever it may be. And we get to pause and say, no, these things are hard and this is really difficult and you are God, you are in control, which helps us to remember who we are in his eyes too. That's so good. I like how you gave three examples. So there was um, Job who worshiped with his words, right? Yes. And then there was the woman with the oil who worshiped with a gift. Um, she came to him with a gift. And then there was Abraham who worshiped through an act. Yeah. And so I think right there we see different examples and different ways that we can worship. So like you said, whether you're folding laundry and you just want to stop and maybe in your heart say who God is, or maybe you want to sing and shout with praise, whatever that looks like, just being in that pres being in the presence of God and just reminding him who he is and what he has done for you is, is how you worship. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's all different examples that you brought right. to attention. And so I think that is just a beautiful reminder for us as we go into our second week of study. So that was, yeah. so Laura. thank you so much for preparing that for us. Yeah, I love that. And you know, he doesn't want us to be perfect. Like you said, he doesn't say to us, you need to have this perfect ordered, you know, way that you worship every single time. He just wants our willing hearts. He yeah. just wants our willing hearts. Mm -hmm. And it helps us to remember again, the truth that we are enough in him. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to strive to be perfect. And we can use these, you know, seemingly mundane things every day and turn them into a time where we're proclaiming his goodness through the way that we do them. Oh, that's wonderful. And how sweet that you provided us with something that we can really get our hearts right um, by writing the word and, and getting ready to worship each and every day. Whether you do this in the morning and write the scripture or at night, that's just another opportunity we have to cultivate worship and um, just rem remember who God is. So that is wonderful. We're headed into week two of our three week study. So look at that, you guys are already almost halfway done. Um, a three week study, that, that's a nice ring to it. It's like a breath of fresh air, especially in the midst of the hustle and bustle of the season. So Laura, we're very excited for week two. Thank you for another wonderful teaching today. So something we know that's very important here at Proverbs 31 Ministries, and as you know as well, is when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. And so we love that we get to use the Write the Word journal to do just that. So Laura, I hope you have a wonderful week. OBSers, we hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.